Hi, everyone. Today is Thursday, April the 4th of 2024, and we're here for the weekly crypto review with, of course, Moo. How's it going, Moo? <laughs> going good, man. Uh, been a busy, busy week, um, probably for both of us and probably for a lot of people uh, listening. I wanted to ask you um, about the real world assets that, and, and I've been hearing about this for a while from people like Raul Paul, who are explaining about how assets can be registered on the blockchain and this is a not just finance a lot of people look at you know cryptos and oh you're trying to make a return on bitcoin you're trying to stake your ethereum and make a return oh you're sending money across the world but they don't think about all the other things that i start to tell them about all the wonderful things that blockchain technology can do and one of the things is registering real world assets and then you get into for example you know someone can't own a picasso but they can own a portion of one right because that's exactly. the other thing on the blockchain and you don't have to worry about this theft and corruption because on the blockchain it's trustless so it's registered they're in there and i was watching some information on real world assets and i saw that of course most of it is on ethereum like more than 50 percent but then there's um, a company called Franklin Templeton, which yep. goes back, gosh, I don't know how long they've been around, 150 years, a very long time, at least very 100. Long time. And they are actually using da -da -da, Stellar. And they have like 27%. <laughs> and that was the big thing with Stellar is that, you know, it's um, one of, it's just one of those, you know, digital currencies that they really have gone after that market. They, they're going after the big companies to, um, you know, utilize their blockchain. So I was excited about that. And I also see that another cryptocurrency, because we talked about oh, what the AI currencies, right? That those went, the meme coins. And now, I mean, I don't know how big real world assets are right now, but I really saw that it was Ethereum. Um, oh, Tezos was in there too, by the way, Tezos. I was laughing. I was like, Tezos, Stellar, and Polygon seem to be main big players in that. And I thought, you know, I'm definitely going to ask Moo about this. Yeah, sure. So let's go ahead and take a look. We've been talking about this over at the Nerds for over a year, way before any talking head or Raul Paul, Raul Paul started talking about it. Um, this It was obvious that this is the way things were going to go. Bonds were beginning to settle on chain, um, all sorts of things, treasuries, um, things like this. So let me kind of just uh, show a few things here, maybe. There's a there's a very interesting site people can go to. I was looking at the, the uh, U.S. Treasury bills which they had about, what was it 5 million in, and a year later it's 150 million? Or is yeah, it 150 it's, billion? Uh, it's, I mean, let's just go through some of these. I mean, <clears throat> your major chains here are Ethereum, um, and that's that's handling like uh, a lot of the uh, BlackRock stuff. Normal people can't get into this, right? Um, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a hundred grand just to be able to get a ticket to play. So. But anyway, they have what they're calling this uh, this uh, institutional digital uh, liquidity fund. Um, there's different things in here, but this one alone is uh, what 280 million. Um, so I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, looks great. Um, so yeah, so basically a lot of these are either on Stellar, uh, Polygon, or Ethereum. Ethereum is uh, much much larger. Um, you have a couple, um, but there's they're not really doing anything. Like these are obviously tests um with like xdc or or canto uh but these are just tests you can tell by the amounts the ones that they're actually using are obviously ethereum overwhelming ethereum well you can see it here um this is just for tokenized treasuries by the way and and this is this is kind of the first way that this was rolled out um but anyway you can kind of see here ethereum is is the largest uh with the treasuries and then stellar's uh next largest and then you have uh slivers of polygon and solana in here and then canto's really tiny but uh yeah this is this is the way things are going just like you said you know a lot of people can't purchase a you know blackrock's very into um real estate right especially uh what, what do you call that uh commercial real estate so um you know Instead of having to sell uh, gigantic buildings for a dollar <laughs> in liquidation, they could they could literally just chop it up into pieces and sell pieces off um, and allow some sort of revenue sharing or something. I, I'm not sure what they're going to do. This is the truth. Anything can be tokenized. Um, and a lot of people say, yeah, but it's on chain and it doesn't exist in the real world. Give me a break. I mean, how many extrapolations of uh, things on top of things on top of things do we have represented in the stock market, for example? Well, right? Where do you that think share, your is registered? Exactly. Mainly. 
All of a sudden, it doesn't re- it doesn't matter that your deed is registered at the. I mean, I'm right. waiting to get my deed here registered. It's a big rigmarole, but I wouldn't. I would never just go on with my life and not expect to go into my apartment here someday and yeah. find somebody else living there if I don't go register my deed. I mean, you have to have some sort of documentation. And what I what the, I love way how you point out about how BlackRock, now I thought they were more into multifamily, you know, buying up homes, buying up apartment buildings to rent to people who are, you know, going to work, et cetera. But you make a good point about the commercial properties because we all know those are completely in the toilet. Buildings are being sold for $1, especially the older ones. Um, You know, they're not getting any money for them. Well, here's the thing, very, very small market of companies, hedge funds, individuals who are gonna buy these large commercial buildings. Now you get an entire new economy of people, people like you and me, who normally would never buy a commercial building. But since this one in, um, you know, for example, let's say it's in Boston and it's mm-hmm. in, in the nice uh, heritage area there, and just because of, you know, the current downturn in that area, for example, and the commercial situation, the building is going for only 10% of its value. Well, if you can go in and tokenize this and put it out on the market, you know, people like you and I could say, hey, you know what, that's, uh, I, I, I used to live in that area. I think it's great. I think it's going to turn around. I think it's going to be up and coming. And I'm, I'm going to throw in, you know, five or $10,000 of an investment based on I can get an income from the rents and I think it's going to be worth the building is going to return to its previous value. Whereas, Mm -hmm. I mean, before I could never even look into doing something like that because I only have five or $10,000 to put in. Yeah, exactly. This this changes, this this gives an entire new, and I mean, I'll tell you, that's why these commission salespeople, because that's all they are, right? I don't care what anyone says. I used to work, I worked with them for years. They eat, but they kill the same day, man. I was (laughs) like... And, and they looked at this as an entire, oh, this is an entire new market. We can sell this to people that normally wouldn't even be in this market. And of course, it gives the little guy an opportunity to get into some of the things that, you know, some of the uh, wealthier people in businesses used to get into exclusively. Yeah, I mean, the things that can be done with this are just absolutely amazing. I, I could see, you know, several people, um, you know, owning uh, real estate, uh, whether that be rentals, uh, you know, there's all sorts of loans and bonds that come out of this. There's all, you know, just many, many things. I mean, um, you know, I, I, you know, you could see things, uh, well, anyway, I could go on and on about the possibilities of this, but I kind of do that over at the nerves. But, uh, anyway, it's obvious that this narrative is, is, you know, this gives, this gives a true accounting and that's uh, desperately what's needed. Um, let me see if I, okay. How do I turn that off? Uh, it gives a true accounting, it gives a true accounting of all sorts of things. And, and one thing that blockchain does extremely well is it records transactions. So if there needs to be a true accounting of everything, including us, because we're going to be a part of it too, uh, where our ins and our outs are on a blockchain. So it, it really, it, it, it puts structures in a better uh, frame to understand what they have, what they don't have, the holes. Um, And listen, if I was writing the rules, I'd write them a little bit differently, but no one asked me. So it's just the way we're going and it will be efficient. It'll be way, way more efficient. So anyway, that's kind of what I think about it. I think it's good. Love love seeing those real world assets applied to blockchain. This wasn't something that existed a few years ago. I mean, I'm not even worried about whether or not the crypto market is going to go ahead. I mean, there was, there were times in between 2019 and 2021 when you know before the big run when you know there there were many times that we felt that or people felt that the financial industry would see our end because really it's not good for them blockchain right it exposes that they can't do the things that they used to do and it includes everybody but now that they see that they can't they can't stop what's coming so now they're they're going to find a way that they can integrate it into their system. So this is great news for everybody. And I'm excited to see what other types of products and technology they'll be coming out with. And But more importantly, I was excited to see that Polygon and Stellar and even Tezos, I was like, and of course, Ethereum, we've been a big fan of ETH for a very long time now. But it was nice to see with all the, you know, there's thousands of cryptocurrencies that currencies out there and in the in the top cryptos there's still there's quite a few there's between you know 
like probably, I know this doesn't seem like a lot to people, but you know, I would say between 40 and 50 um, really good projects out there and to see a couple of names that we've been holding for like a really long time. Well, not all of us have been holding, but you know what I mean? It's to see that there's a method to that madness. Yeah, this real world asset stuff has been going on for years. I mean, I remember back in 2020 when Franklin used Ethereum to start settling bonds just as a test. So, you know, I mean, we're four years into it. It's just now that I think they're comfortable talking about it. And Larry uh, Fink over at BlackRock's made it very clear that he plans on using Ethereum. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, it's. I mean, it's great news and, you know, very, very interesting to me. Um, hi, Sam. You mentioned in a previous live stream that Link could possibly hit $200 in this bull run. If so, do you see DOT hitting the same number? Question mark. Uh, no, I think that uh, Link uh, will go before a DOT. Uh, this one is from Casey Princess. Hey, Sam and Moo, what is the price prediction for Gala in this bull run? Will it hit an all-time high this year or after 2025? I think that most of the stuff that we're working with right now is going to see its previous all-time highs. All it like across the board. I think the money that's coming in, especially once you start working in the between the three to eight trillion mark, once we get past the three trillion, and I think that that is going to accelerate the increase in the price of all coins because across the board, everything. I mean, people will be coming in who've never been in the business before. There'll be people who only are dabbling in it, where now they're getting the green light to put in larger sums of money. Um, you know, maybe they put in, just dabbled in it and put in like $20,000 and now that money's like 200000 because I felt like for many people, not all of the cryptocurrencies, but that a, a good chunk of them would go between five and 10 times. I mean, we've already seen that with Solana, right? Where, you know, if you got it at around 20 bucks, it's already gone around 10 times and $20 was a very real price um, just over a year ago. Um, you know, so somebody who now has 20,000 turned into 200,000. They're telling their friends, their relatives, they're calling their um, investment guy, making demands. They want more, they want more. They want all their money in cryptos. They want their money in cryptos in one area or another. Um, you know, they want, they want those tokenized real estate transactions. They want in on that. They want, want in on uh, the, the staking and the banking. They, they want in on the creation of new uh, cryptocurrencies and how can they get in on that? That's what I see happening. Over once we hit the three trillion, then it's going to be a big wake up call, and it, there's not going to be like this huge mega pullback. Everyone's like, oh, well, there must be like a huge pullback. It's like, no, it's what'll happen is that we'll have the entire world is going to start to notice, and then you have that compilated with the everything all at once, where you know societies are melting down and. Not everybody can get their hands on gold and gold and silver are not necessarily the best thing to be getting your hands on when you're trying to flee a country, right? So again, you know, we see advancement in that. We see El Salvador, um, you know, breaking records economically and uh, doing extremely well. Argentina is going to be setting an example for the world. And a big part of that, when they do documentaries and they look at, you know, how things were here and then how things changed and and um, how life is so much better for people there. And they'll say, oh, yeah, and they made Bitcoin, you know, legal tender. You know, so we're going to start to see all of those changes going on in the world. So right now, it's really just a good idea just to try to get yourself um, positioned across the board so that whenever stuff is popping, you don't miss. Thanks, Sam. And if you guys have a question, just go ahead and put it over in the question section uh, over on the right-hand side there. It's, it's the thing that looks like a little message box with the uh, question mark inside of it. If you're not familiar with the platform. This one's from uh, Bradley J. Hello, Samantha. BlackRock tokenized 1 billion of US treasuries on the Ethereum blockchain. When will the US stock market be tokenized? Oh, when will the US stock market be tokenized? Hmm. That's going to take a little bit longer. I would say like I'll be, we'll be in the three to eight trillion range. That'll be like one of the things that again, they're going to be people when they start calling their brokers and start looking at that's when, and then that's part of how these companies don't have their money abandoned. They'll be like, no, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's on the, it's on the blockchain. Yeah, no, let's, let's press that button. Let's, let's buy some of, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, let's buy some, I'm trying to think of an American stock, Coca-Cola, 
Sure. You know, it's on the blockchain. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the blockchain. Don't worry. <laughs> And it, it'll, I think it will, it will, it will feel very uh, normal to legacy people as well. Um, you know, it'll, it'll, I think it'll have some of the same feel that it has for them today. You know, they don't have to go out and create necessarily a wallet somewhere. Uh, they won't have to remember, you know, 12 or 24 seed words. Um, things will be pretty seamless and their stuff will probably be held in custody. But, uh, um, but yeah, it's coming. It's coming, guys. Um, and they've made it very clear that it's coming. So, um Matthias has got one here. Let's take a look. Uh, hey, Sam and Moo, do you see Game GPT and Mantra OM as survivors? Thanks. No, I don't see J Game GPT. I think that um, when they named it, they were just trying to get um, they were trying to get some traction with the name because you know how there's Chat GPT. There's game GPT, um, and I, I haven't heard of either of these ones either. Have you heard of those? Yeah, I, I think probably the reason other people are probably talking about them now is well, let's go take a look. Um, <laughs> I've lost my button. Hold on. Oh, and if anybody in the room, if you guys put your question in Discord, if you could just see it and if it's in the question section here and upvote it. And uh, we'll see if we have time to check that before we leave in the room there. Oh, look at that, uh, AI-driven game builder. Yeah. Um, so this one's really went crazy over the last 30 days. It's up uh, 219%. Um, but anyway, um, you know, I, I have heard about this. I haven't messed with it very much. Um, so anyway, that's all I'll, real, I'll really say about this. Uh, also, I kind of want to um, kind of... I, want to, I know it's annoying when I kind of lecture or throw out words of warning, but I think it's important if, if I feel like I know something that others don't, because um, if somebody knew something that I didn't, uh, that could be tricky for me, I'd want them to let me know, or at least give their opinion. I'm um, seeing a lot of things pop up now saying they're real world assets. So please be careful. Uh, if you go to that site that I showed earlier, uh, rwa.xyz, um, you can see what the real projects are doing. So. It's just like back in the NFT craze or, you know, when smart contracts were first available, all these places, all these different networks and tokens and everything told you they could do these things. They were just jumping on the bandwagon. In my mind, you know, the real world assets that are succeeding are the ones that legacy has moved time, treasure and people uh, over to help build out. And they've been, like I said, they've been building these out for about four years now. So, um, just be careful just because some something or somebody may say something or, a network is saying they, they do real world assets or whatever, just, you know, there's only a few and I can name them, but if you can just go right to the site and see once, which ones are actually there. So, and they kind of do different things. Some are pure credit, uh, you know, some are like tokenizing treasuries. There's a real estate, a uh, bunch of real estate ones that are coming online now. So, you know, uh, things like this. So, yeah, a long time ago, Proppy was one that, mm -hmm. you know, came up, but again, it's, you know, and you nailed it, Moo, it's the, the legacy market that's what's and and that was really what was always going to make it successful mm -hmm. i didn't ever i never felt that they were going to build their own coins and tokens i know a lot of people had that fear that they were going to be left holding these worthless um technologies because you know companies would just go and hire some guy and make their own kind of thing but i always felt that they would adopt that they would go in and say, yeah, we want to use Ethereum. Oh, look, um, yeah, sure, we'll run it off of Stellar, you know, because why reinvent the wheel when they already, when there's already something out there that's already been tried and tested and true. And I mean, Ethereum has been around for a very long time. And uh, so has Stellar. Uh, Matic, I think that Matic's only been, what is it, 2020? That we first started hearing about it, that it became like a bigger Maybe project. 2019. I'd have to go look, yeah. but yeah. 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 It's not, it's not as old as, you know, the other ones, for example, like Stellar and Ethereum. But again, you know, longevity does give you more time to try to break it. And when it goes down a few times or has a hack or I don't know, a wormhole in it, I'm just making things up now. <laughs> <laughs> A wormhole in it. <laughs> oh, it had a wormhole. I, I patched it. We're good. <laughs> but, you know, after that's happened a few times, like Ethereum, um, even yeah. Solana. I mean, so I was telling someone, I was like, Solana was down like 
for almost the whole day, um, so many days into the year. I mean, these are, this is why, you know, Solana is 180 bucks and Ethereum is, you know, 3,500. You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. And the two that you mentioned earlier, you know, Stellar and Ethereum, portions of these have been built out by legacy and people need to understand that, you know, uh, the Ethereum Alliance is so large, you know, <laughs> A lot of these things have been tested. Some of them have private versions of Ethereum that they run to do different things uh, with, with each other or test things with. So, you know, and Stellar is about as legacy as you can get, to be honest with you. So um, if you understand their history and where that kind of came from, it's it's fairly obvious. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, take a look. Uh, this one is from John. Hey, Sam and Moo, any blabs on the following two tokens, Book of Meme and Zbik Protocol? Both are Solana-based. Thanks. What do you think of those, Boo? I'm not getting anything. No, I'm not interested in those. Uh, you know, I, if people want to play these meme coins, and here I go lecturing again, but if people want to play these meme coins, these are not something that you buy and stick in a wallet and forget about, um, especially the micro meme coins, um, because there's people, there's bots and quants and, you know, pretty knowledgeable traders out there trading from minute to minute. So you're that's what you're up against. So um, you could, you know, you could be rinsed pretty early. Um, the reason why these things are desirable is it it's kind of like when the NFTs uh, were desirable, right? Or um, whatever. It was a way to be part of a community, uh, you know, to feel like part of a group, uh, do things together, you know, coalesce around one common idea, uh, even if it's just for five or ten minutes. So um, it just it moves at hypersonic speed and. Some of these platforms, like up at Coinbase, for example, you can very easily buy Ethereum and then use Ethereum on the base chain, right? So you can do trades, you can do things extremely cheap. Uh, Solana is the same way. Uh, you know, you can buy into this and sell that, go over here and do this, whatever, and it's very, very cheap. So that's why these things have kind of taken off. Um, but I, I kind of just view those things as, uh, you know, Anybody doing that kind of stuff, you're just kind of a glorified beta tester. Can you make some money there? Yeah. But these are not ones that you hold. Like, a, you know, I think somebody mentioned to me, you know, some token that they had and they were going to ride it to the moon. I'm like, it's already down. Like, it it had its hour, you know. Um, it's gone. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing there. Um, so yeah. anyway, um, anyway, people should just be careful. Um, yeah, I think that people yeah. need to have an understanding of what they're buying. I mean... I, I can't get into any of these short term things that, that go with the big blast and then do a round trip because I just I can't do trading. I just can't. I miss it. I got to, you know, just buy and hold. So I would rather, you know, go into uh, the stronger stuff. And thankfully, you know, being around in here for a few years, I can do that. Um, I know a lot of people, though, are coming in new or they bought in on the height of 2021. So they're still working at trying to get back what they lost because I mean, they lost like 90% of their money. And I mean, I don't know too many people who lost 90% of their money that just a few years later could get that back, like in just a few years, because most times it's gone. It's gone. You'll never see it again. Um, people and you're definitely not going to get it back trading. We've seen no. people do this over no, and over. No, they become so. more desperate. And, yeah. you know, we see two things. We see people who make this easy money. And, you know, we used the example before of someone, well, when we spotted Matic and it was two cents and somebody bought it and made like 100,000 and decided they were brilliant and that now they could yield farm. And then, you know, a few weeks later, they had a rug pool. Yeah. You know, and you know that in their mind, I mean, they're building castles in their mind. They're like, oh, yeah. and I'm going to do this and I'm going to show my family how great I am and I'm going to put the money into this business. And then they're turning the 100,000 into 10 million, you know, and now they got yeah. zero because again, you know, going big, going big, going big, that only works out for very few people. I mean, that's why they're in the news because it works out for very few people. Yeah. Yeah. So be very careful out there, you guys. You know, I always think it's best to just be in the good stuff, be in the best stuff you can. Uh, start there. And then uh, once you kind of establish that, if you want to try some things and try some things. Um, but, you know, people's education needs to <laughs> catch up to their expectations, I think, a lot of times around these things. Um, you know, these are, these are, yeah, I'll just stop there. Um, okay. Tinkerbell's got one here. Uh, hi, guys. Hope everything's going well. Sam, do you see this token doing well? And then the next one is sent too soon. 
oops, I'm asking about NVIDIA Enu. Oh, yeah, no, that's, I don't, yeah, no, I don't play any of those at all. Just because, again, what I just talked about, where I don't do like the short term bursts because I can't trade them. You know, I might buy one just for fun here and there. You know, like I get talked into buying Bonk. But I only sacrificed two Solana. So it wasn't yeah. like a huge amount of money or anything like that. Like you spent you said, a whole, you know, you spent you a whole have... $16 on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I, you know, I, I don't, I think when you see names, just like when you see stuff that has GPT on it, added on, or when you see um, the, you know, NVIDIA Inu. Well, NVIDIA is, you know, one of the top um, stocks on the NASDAQ. So all somebody's tr doing is they're try just trying to find a name that catches on with people. Like I could go in and create um, a Samu ant, a Samu. I could I could go in and I could create a Samu coin, right? And but then we if are not. Fell, so, but we are not. So if somebody else out there does that, no, you know that it's not us, and no one should buy that. No, no. <laughs> right? No, exactly. So yeah. don't. That's and that's. I guess when I make that point that anybody. So when you hear about these people who you know put $500 in and, you know, they became millionaires. Well, first of all, they probably weren't watching the coin, right? They were probably like me one day opening up my wallet and going, what's going on here? Because <laughs> <laughs> that literally happens to me. I'm like, what's going on here? You know? and, re and really to play this micro meme game, you have to use certain tools. You have to be able to look at mempools. You have to be able to see where the money's flowing into contracts. I've run into maybe two or three people on, on these discords that actually do that, uh, that, that have that level of uh, experience and technical ability to know where to go and the tools to use. So like I said, if you're up there playing, these people already got their token way before anybody's talking about it or it's listed on you know, CoinGecko or anything like that. So you know, people just gotta be careful. Um, you know, there's, there's people and bots out there that just buy things. If a bunch of money flies into a specific contract, it will just buy it. And, and the bot and the person that created the bot doesn't even know what they bought. Sometimes until after, days after they've sold it. You see what I mean? It's, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a tough game. I, I just wouldn't, if you, you know, yeah. Be careful. I, I typically go to find that stuff myself. I don't I don't wait to see what like this is early days when I I mean I wasn't around anybody in the Discord because it didn't exist. This is 2017 when I was doing my buying. So I just had to I just looked through like the list and I just looked to see, you know, what would stand out for me. Now, if I didn't have abilities, I would have done some more deep diving and watched some videos and learned some more technical things about, like you said watching the money that flows into these meme pools. I don't have that yeah. type of training. Very few people who do. Right. If, if you're making a decision based on what somebody is saying, like I, I used the example before of Ivan on tech back in the early days for him to have, like he had over, I think at that time when the market, you know, cryptos were, were the market hadn't even hit 1 trillion yet. Um, he had, you know, about 200,000 subscribers. So when he would do a video, he would get thousands of views on one video. So if he was talking about, you know, one particular type of cryptocurrency that might have been, you know, number 120, I can guarantee you by the time his video had a few thousand views, it would be, it would be, you know, already pumped like to two or three times. And it was, and it was funny because people didn't realize that. And then they would, they would see how stuff that he was sort of, recommending how it all like oh yeah it all went up well it went up because there's nobody else really in the crypto market you right. got the same people watching it's sort of like they might watch five different crypto programs but half of them were watching ivan on tech out of their their five choices kind of thing right um and they just didn't realize that he was choosing stuff and and believe me before he started talking about it on his program he, you know, because he would have done some research and said, you know, this looks like a good one. Well, he would buy it ahead of time. And I don't have anything against that at all, right? Because he would tell people that he holds this, right? He would, you know, I think that that, it, it wasn't like he was trying to scam people. This is just the way that it was. He wasn't sure. making these scammy coins. I mean, he was using his technical training to figure out, you know, which projects were working, which ones, you know, were doing what they were saying they were doing, you know. But the reality is that, you know, when you're watching programs and you hear about 
um, particular meme coins and things like that, you know, odds are you're just going to end up, you know, holding the bank. Yeah. You're just going to be exit liquidity for other people that got there before you. That's, that's the truth. Um, Crypto Believers got one here. Hi. Uh, when do you see the L2s begin to run? Geez, they're already running. Metis is up 240% this year. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they're doing great. 